All right, guys, here I am. I've created a huge piece, full width of a fabric. And I'm just going to work on putting a background down to start with. And then we'll see where it goes from there. So hi, Lori. Hi, Violet. Hi, Mary. Um, I'm kind of thinking of using some more neutral colors just to get color all over the fabric. And then I was going to excuse me, cut, let it dry a little bit, and then cut it to the shape I need for the sides of the bag, which this is a 17 inch by 12 inch rectangle. So I'm gonna work on the whole great big piece, just like it was um, a dirty dozen on a huge piece of um, material or a piece of paper. Hi, Deborah Adams. I think I forgot to turn the autofocus off again. One day I will remember to do everything before I click live. One day. And I'm going to stay kind of far out because I have such a huge piece of fabric here. So it's the full width of the fabric, which is probably about 44 inches. And I think it's about 19 inches wide. So I'm going to work on that. Put a, a just a light background, multiple layers of background. Then I'll cut the paper, cut my fabric into sections, and create kind of a a center area where I would like to put a picture. So I'm not going to paint a scene across the entire thing. I'm going to have like a little window in the middle of it. But for my background, I was thinking of going at it thinking like it might be a piece of Tim Holtz fabric that we're going to create ourselves. So I'm only going to use a peach and a brown and some white and this yellow and the black. And I'm going to roll on the colors and um, do some stenciling and that kind of stuff. Oh, Mary says she doesn't have the sound on, please hold. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to randomly put it all the way down the piece and work the whole piece at once instead of a section at a time so that I can get kind of the same print on the whole fabric. And I have enough fabric here to do the project bag, plus I'll have scraps and things. Hi, Ann. Hi, Nina. Hi, Kristen. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get some color on here. I'm going to use these neutrals. And then um, maybe after I get these down, come in. I've got a violet and a blue and a green and an orange and a red there in the same soft paint. And let's just see what it looks like after I work with these colors first. Um, so the white and the black, I'll probably save those for stenciling and stamping. So I'm going to use yellow and the brown and the orange to just get color on here. Think Tim Holtz kind of thing going on, okay? So I'm going to start with yellow, and I've got two different size brayers. I've got a wide one and a, and a skinny one. This is the speedball one that was on sale at Hobby Lobby not too long ago, probably about a year that's not that long, is it? Hi, Cheryl. So I've got my glass cutting board here. I don't know what state this fabric paint is in because I've had it a very long time. So we'll roll this out. And then just get some color on. Hi, Cole. Greg's getting ready for work. So I'm just going to move my piece of fabric around. And I did apply... Um, interfacing to the back. All right, 
right, so that's the yellow. Let's use some of this orange color. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Barb. And this, this paint that I'm using today is fabric paint, so I'm not having to add any medium to it or anything. And I'm going to kind of keep the background on the light side and focus the thicker, heavier paint on the area that will be kind of the middle of the bag. Hi, Janet. Um, so that we're not having a ton of paint where the sewing machine has to go through. I need some more of that peach colored paint out. Thanks for the thumbs up, guys. And Dee Dee was mentioning this morning Bye. Bye. Have a good day, night, whatever it is for you. Dee Dee was mentioning that it's kind of important that folks, if you can take a minute and come back to these live videos and leave a comment on our lives, even if it's just that was fun or, you know, anything to show the algorithm that y'all do watch the replays and that you find them interesting. Dee Dee was talking about that today. All right, now I'm going to put some brown on here. Yeah, this, this is a project that could take longer than just two days. Because um, what I might do is work on the background today and just start the center and see how far we get. And I don't know if I want to paint on both sides of the bag or just on one. Bye, darling. And he's back. Okay, I'm going to layer some peach again, and I'm just going to keep layering it until I like the way it looks. And then we're going to start um, some stenciling. I've got a variety of stencils, just creating a background. You guys create the background that you would like to work with. And uh, See, it's mixing with the brown, so I'm getting even, even different, a, a more different color here. I might take a wet one to the uh, glass cutting board, clean this off a little bit so I can get some of that true stuff back. Hi, Ruth! Let me get a wet one. All I've got is these antibacterial wipes. Uh-oh. Greg was cooking those hot dogs I can't stand. The, the Hebrew National, I just don't like the, the texture of them, and I don't like the way they smell. So he was cooking those at like 3 o'clock this morning and with onion, and it was just... The smell was making me want to throw up. So I got up and turned the 
fan on over the stove and we tried to go back to bed. And finally I got up and I just cleaned the kitchen again because he'd left it a mess because he didn't want to make noise. But the smell of those hot dogs and onions cooking just was just too much. <laughs> just couldn't cope with it. So I did the dishes and went back to bed. All right, that's probably pretty good. I'll save that aside. We might can use it again. All right, let's see if we can put some yellow down over this. And Janet's put the recipe up if you don't have fabric paint on how to make your own um, fabric uh, medium to turn your regular acrylic paints into uh, stuff that'll work on fabric. So just layer it up any way you want to. Or if you want to go rogue and do this a different way, it's your it's going to be your bag, so you do it your way. But I'm just rolling on some background color right now. So I don't know if we want to call that a prompt or if we just want to uh, do some of our own thing here. All right, I'm kind of liking this background just the way it is. I think I'm going to start um, layering some stenciling on here. And use that wet one, wipe the sprayer off a little bit so it doesn't build up. Yeah, and did you see Janet's recipe there? Two teaspoons of vinegar, two teaspoons of water, two teaspoons of glycerin. Equal amounts of all the ingredients. Does that include the paint, Janet? If you don't have um, fabric paint, acrylic paint will work as long as you don't plan to wash it. If you never plan to wash it and the paint's dry, it'll probably be fine. It's just it doesn't go down into the fibers like the fabric paint does. All right, so now I'm going to add, with the black and white, I'm going to come in and just put um, these stencils on. So I've got, and I might even um, revisit the brown and the maybe add a red to, to the stamp stenciling. So roll color on however you want to, and then use some stencils. I'm going to use this one that's for called linen here. So I think I'm going to use the black. And I do want to put some gold um, accent on here. Hi, the Artful Dabbler. Um, so I was thinking this might need to dry overnight before I can cut it and start on the center portion painting. I'm going to turn the whole thing so I can get the other end. And because I'm putting on really thin layers, it dries pretty quick. Because, see, I can put my hand here and nothing comes up because I um, 
rolled it on. Now, Mary had mentioned that she might paint a rabbit on hers. So I'm not sure what I'm going to paint on mine as of yet. But I'll, my brain will come up with something eventually. All right, I'm going to call that good for that stencil. And then I've got a clock that I could put on here and do portions of the clock maybe. And I think I might mix a little white with some black so it's more of a gray. Is Gail here? Hi, Gail. I've got a couple different um, clock stencils. And you don't have to put on the whole stencil either. You can do just portions of it. So maybe pick that up and do part of it over here too, a different part. And I'm sorry if I'm jiggling you. Um, Well, that's just fine, Ruth. You just sit back and relax and watch us make a mess here. And I, um, I had so much fun with Lisa and Tanya yesterday. And then I, we've got um, the hop with Mary on Friday. And it starts in the morning. I don't have my schedule in front of me. So I can't tell you times right now. But it's on my community tab. And I did go in and adjust um, Aaron's link because I, yeah, I copied it straight from from Mary's tab. So I don't know how the mistake got in there, but I, you know, I did a copy and paste. But you just don't know. I mean, you don't know what's going on with YouTube from one minute to the next, do you? All of these stencils will just have to get cleaned later. I'll put them in a pan with some Murphy's oil soap. And get all the, the stuff off from them. So now I'm making this kind of like a Tim Holtz background. So I'm thinking, what can I paint on something with a Tim Holtz background? So I might have to do some research and decide what to do. That's why I'm saying this might take a couple days, just the painting of it. And then next week we could turn it into some bags. I've got way too much fabric for what I had planned to do, but that's okay to have extra fabric, right? Oh.
And I've got another clock I would like to add on here too. Or just some portions of it. All right, I'm going to call that good on this one. Let's see here. So that's two dirty ones. <laughs> Here's another clock. Let's put, um, ouch, let's put some more clocks on here. Get out toward the edge a little bit. And I think I'll just go, I think I'll use that the um, chocolate brown. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Cheryl. I'm just using the same dirty sponge. I should probably change to another one, but I'm not really too concerned. It's going to pick up some of the gray, but now this clock stencil was a huge 12 by 12 stencil and I just cut it apart so I could use the, the smaller pieces of it. You know what just popped in my head that I think would look really cool? What if I paint a bottle with something inside it? Like a bottle laying on its side on the side of the bag and maybe paint a little scene inside the bottle. That would be kind of cool looking. Oh, I'm so glad, Nancy to think of fun things that we haven't done before um, to to bring in some new ideas and stuff and some things I'm bringing back from like the 80s or 90s of things I did you know as a young mother and a te late teen <laughs> Yeah, some days we just have to turn everything off and walk away. Um, I'm going to need a couple days like that coming up, I think. And um, I really need to start working in the garden. I want to uh, clean up that flower bed that's beside the garage so that all of my irises will have lots of room. And I've got gladiolias that I dug up from at the cottage really fast in October and I saved them, and I was supposed to plant them out on March 9th here. So I need to get those in the ground. So I figure if I start with that bed next to the garage, since it's a flower bed, I might throw some snapdragon seeds in there too. These are going to be an, a sticky mess when we're done, all these stencils and things. All right, I've got more stencils I want to use. I'm going to load it up with stencils. Got some arrows here. I'm not going to, I'm going to, now I'm going to put this in the water because I don't really want the, um, the arrows to come out too muddy down. So I'm going to use, um, the orange on here. It's kind of a peachy color and put some of these arrows in.
don't worry if you can barely see it as this fabric paint dries even regular acrylic paint as it dries it it'll it'll be seen it's it doesn't stay invisible so if you guys um want to follow along with me and paint over a couple days that's what i'll do tomorrow but um feel free if you can't make it tomorrow take this in any direction you want it to go mary does that all the time so anybody can do it if mary can do it anybody can do it just take it any direction that you want i'm going to flip this again here hi Barbara We're just stenciling. We rolled on some color and now we're just stenciling like mad women here. Or if Roy's here, mad folks. <laughs> He's the only guy I've seen in here in a while. I hadn't seen Mark Muir in a long time pop in. I'm still liking the concept of painting a bottle on the side of this and put something in the bottle. All right, is the Artful dab Dabbler, is that Tori? I wanna make sure I'm catching the names. I'm trying to do better about um, checking the chat. All right, we got enough arrows here and there, I think. But wait, maybe not. Let's use these arrows. I have arrows. Let's see, I wanna bring in a new color. I think I wanna bring in red now. Um, this is just, just red. And I think I'm gonna mix it a little bit with that peachy color. That might not be a good idea, but we'll see. Uh-oh. See what happens here. Let's do, I'm going to try to do just one type of arrow here and there. Here we go. Let's do this curvy one here. Oh, somebody's, why are you growling? You hear the children outside? I'm sorry, Callie. They're not used to children, so when they hear one, she's growling and stomping off. Maybe I'll do this one that's next to it too because it's cool looking. Oh, thank you, Janet. Thank you. And hi, Tori. Now that I know your name, I'll try to remember it. Don't jump up here. Nope, nope. 
good time. Sorry. Get down. You're fine. I don't need any help. The door is locked. The children can't get in. It's fine. You're all right. That one didn't turn out as good as I'd hoped. I'll do this great big guy here. Mary's working along, so she's not going to be chatting, which that's okay. And if you want to pick a different theme than kind of an industrial-looking thing like I'm doing, you feel free. You go for it. All right, I'm going to turn this whole thing again. That red is so intense, I don't want to do, you know, a lot of them, but I thought they'd be fun. started watching a series on Netflix called The Travelers. Has anybody else watched it? It's quite interesting. We're going to make this into a project bag, and I've got enough fabric that I can make a small... Um, I'm trying to keep the cat off from here to make a small journal cover. See, it's fine, you're fine. No children are coming in. Nobody's gonna get you. She's like, where are they? I have to be able to see them. Let's see if I can do this one. Well, somebody's tinging me. I can hear the phone going off. That's usually one of y'all chit-chatting. All right, maybe something else down here. You can do so much layering just with um, rollers and stencils. You can really get an interesting piece of fabric in no time. Yeah, I'm going to have to really soak these. All right, I'm going to mix a little white in with the pink I have left or, or whatever color you want to call this. It's going to make pink because I'm mixing it with this red. Now I've got just a glass cutting board. I'm just kind of using a, a spatula thing, my jigger. All right. Let's see here. I think I'm going to make some more circly things here. I just went through my stencils and I pulled anything that felt kind of like Tim Holtz. And I said, that'll do, that'll do. And I think some of these are Tim Holtz. 
And then some I got at that All About Fabric Warehouse up in the upstate. And I think I wrote on it. This one was called Heart Medallion. Let's see. So I'm going to have to really think, do I want to do the bottle or should I do something else on the side? Or is it going to be good without having to put a picture on it? I really wanted to try to paint an image. Maybe I'll do one of those little quirky babies that I do looking up from the bottom of the bag. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it. She is not happy at all with the sound of a child. Which makes me wonder. I'll have to lock them all out on the porch and lock the deadbolt so the children can't get to the cats because... I'm afraid Tippy might scratch somebody. All right. Because, you know, little ones, they don't understand. They can't just grab a cat. <laughs> and our cats are used to quiet, and it's just usually Scott and I. All right. Let's turn this bad boy. What are we looking for? Oh, the original, it's about 20 inches wide by the width of the fabric is what I'm using. So about 44 inches wide, I'm, I'm thinking. Um, I just wanted a big enough piece that I could get two sides um, for a project bag and then um, a little bit extra to maybe do a small journal cover or a, a small traveler's notebook or something that could be taken out to do some sketching and stuff in when the weather starts getting warmer. I thought about making some little sketchbooks. This is all just random. I don't have a set pattern that I'm putting these on with or anything. I'm just um, filling it up. Got, I need one more if I can get it. Let's see what we got here. All right. I think that I'm going I'm only going to use one on these. And I think I want to use I don't know what I want to use on here. This maybe or maybe this. This would be more interesting. Let's see. Put this down here. And I'm going to bring the yellow back. Yeah, it's a, yeah, a, about 44 by 19 or 20, uh, whatever the width of a, the fabric is. And cheap muslin that I bought um, one year when Joann's was doing the, you buy by the bolt. So I bought a whole bolt of this stuff, not knowing that it was this thin. That's why I've got it um, backed with a medium weight interfacing. Put this thing on top of the darkest dark areas to give a little pop of color on that dark and this just looks like you know uh, maybe a watermark and some lines you can't hardly even see it but i figure if i do it on top of the darker brown It'll break up the really dark brown patches enough that it will be interesting to look at.
Let's see, here's another really dark area right here. I filled the suet cake feeders back up today because the birds were all looking in the window. And that black cat from up the street has decided sitting by our bird feeder is where he needs to be first thing in the morning. So I have to go out in my robe and chase him off. I'm not sure who he belongs to. Oh, time for food, Barbara says. Okay, Barbara, it's fine. Um, I had lunch with Scott and a snack with Greg, and I'll probably be good for a while. I do need to cook a meal, um, so Scott will have a dinner for tomorrow night because we ate the rest of the chili Rolanos I had made um, for lunch today. Here's another piece. Maybe I'll do... I don't know. I haven't put any of this down here. Let's put some down here. My sponge is getting all dried out a little bit on me. I think that's going to be good on that. I do want to use this one too. Um, I want to be careful not to use up all my black because I do want to use it. Honey, it's okay. Go lay down. You're fine. <laughs> She's like, oh, children. Thanks for the thumbs up, guys. My um, niece's wife um, has been getting some treatments to help her with her. Um, she has a very unique illness, and she's been getting some um, IV treatments that are helping so much that she's able to get out and do yard work again, which she hasn't been able to do that for a while. So she's like so ecstatic. I'm so proud of her. It's not been easy going through those treatments. I just hope she doesn't overdo because she's feeling so good. You know, that's that's the danger. When we start feeling better, then we overdo and hurt ourselves. <laughs> been there, done that. Is Lizzie? I've been so busy um, cleaning up my mess from yesterday, and I haven't been watching very many videos in the evenings. I caught some of Mary, and then I got drowsy, and I was like, well, maybe I'm tired and <laughs> need to go to bed. Now, I was thinking I would just make marks with this glittery gold stuff. But now I'm wondering, can I squeeze some of that out and put it through a stencil? Or should I just make lines? It's the um, fabric paint that comes in the squeeze bottle. See, I don't want to put a lot of really heavy paint because I want to be able to stitch through this.
And this is just the background. It's getting a little too dark. Um, I need to bring some light back to the top, I'm afraid. I think I've gotten it too dark. For my liking, at least. I think I've gone to the dark side on this. I want to use up the black paint, but then we're going to do something. Maybe add some white here and there just to bring this back up. I think I'm going to set that one aside. And I'm just not going to worry about the, uh, the black. All right, let's see. I don't see why not. Um, and it'll work on fabric. I mean, it works on canvas. So, in fact, quite frankly, gesso will stick to anything. <laughs> so, if you've got black gesso, go for it. I want to save the blue, the purple, the green, and the neon orange for when I'm actually doing painting so that it'll really pop. I had to really, I had to put band-aids on, on my thumb and a couple of my fingers from where they've been splitting so bad, from washing so much and using um, hand sanitizer every time I get back in the car. I figure if I have to touch a door, a button, a knob, or a pin pad, I'm, I'm not going anywhere near my face and I'm using wipes and stuff but it's causing a lot of crackage so last night i i loaded up on uh triple antibiotic on my fingers and then i put lotion on the back of my hands that burned Whew. all right i've got this right here it's a fabric spray paint permanent fabric spray paint and it's in snow white so we're gonna add some of this on here just some splatter Yep, Violet saying, go for it. Um, it'll not crack on you. Well, I don't know that. Oh, there we go. Oh, that could be cool. I think the key is squeeze it all the way down so you don't get. Wipe the sprayer off. Now back to my thinking on the, the gold. This is the part I was wondering about. I wonder if I can make this drip down. No, it's grabbed the fabric. It was an idea. Kind of like the squirts of white here and there. Um, maybe I'll scrape it. To spread that out a little bit. I don't know. I don't want to get too crazy. It's about the layering. I'll do it a little bit on here and see what happens. Maybe on the thicker portions of it so that it'll dry.
looking pretty good. Hi, Laura. We're making a mess on fabric. All right. I want to save those colors for the actual painting. I'm going to take a sip of tea and read chat for a minute and sit down because I stand when I'm working with you guys because it's easier because my table sits up. Is Amy here? Hi, Amy. Hi, Kathy. Kathy's having a paint party later tonight, aren't you? I saw where you um, had announced. Seven Eastern, Kathy's World is having a paint party. Who's going to be on with you, Kathy? You see, I used to do Wednesday evenings when Scott was um, working nights. Now he's working. He was working days. Now he's working a split shift. So I'm kind of settling on this 3.30 p.m. Eastern because it's after lunch before dinner, and hopefully I'm done before Mary needs to eat her dinner. So I'm trying to feel out if this time works for you guys. Now on Thursdays, I feel like I'm stepping on Tanya and Lisa with the sewing. So I've got to readjust my time on Thursdays, I think, because I want to be off before Beth comes on. Maybe I need to go earlier on Thursdays, which is kind of hard right now because Scott and Greg are sleeping. Yep, Wednesday evenings. See, if I it, when I stopped doing Wednesday evenings, everybody said, oh, Wednesday's open. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I kind of like this 3.30 in the afternoon. Scott's gone to work. Greg's gone to work. The sun is still up. So I'm still feeling energized. When the sun starts going down, Becky kind of fades anymore. Because um, I, I get up early with the cats, and then it's I'm wide open until I go to sleep. Now, I had been doing in my little group, we're not doing it this Friday because we got the hop with Mary, but in my Facebook group, Aunt Bex Creations, on Fridays at 8 a.m. Eastern, um, we've been getting together. Um, Anne's been with us once, and Janet Nash, she pops in, and uh, Deborah Adams has been, and all we do, it's not recorded. Um, Janet Baum comes in. She doesn't have a camera right now, but she, she comes in and listens and she talks with us. She's got a mic. So you do not have to be on camera. It's not, it's not recorded. It's not going to be made public or any of that. It's a private craft session time to just craft and chat. And it's just a lot of fun. And you would not believe how much we get done in those little sessions. Um, I can never remember her name when I'm on here live. Fran. Fran gets a ton done and um, it gives her a real good break. She takes care of her mom and um, it really gives her a nice break. And it seems to be a good time for them because in the UK at 8 a.m., you know, it's their lunchtime and you know, her mom goes down for a nap and that kind of thing. So I was thinking I might set a room up in Fibsville to do that. Um, I don't know the maximum number of people we can have in a room. Um, we've had as many, I think, as six people um, in there. Uh, this last week we had a, a full house, but it was a, so, it's just so much fun. And you get to know each other by the, your faces because we put our faces up. We're not being recorded or anything. So I was thinking we could do it in Fibsville. I just need to know a day and time next week that's not already taken that we can take time to jump into Fibsville room. You do not have to come right at the start either. 
if you've got something else going, and I usually do four hours from eight to noon, you can come in, stay a little while, leave. Sherry Hubing came in and saw us for a minute and left. Um, it's just a lot of fun. So let's see, what do we want to do with this now? Do we want to go ahead and cut it and create an area where I can do a painting? Mm -hmm. Yes, and we can talk to one another and we can respond to questions and things right away. Yeah, yeah, it's in the Facebook groups. You can set up rooms and have private private crafting time together. It's a, it's a whole lot of fun. And it is separate from YouTube, so it would be different um, than what everybody's used to. But um, you get to see and chit-chat with folks, and people can um, do different projects. We're not all working on the same one. And Anne does one. Anne has a... Um, She's done a room. Her and I chatted once, and then it was during the mess with my family, um, which everybody seems to be doing okay right now. Um, it's hard to communicate because my dad can't hear. I've tried going to the family things on Tuesdays and Thursday nights, and um, it's just weird. But anyway, everybody seems to be doing fine. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut this. And I'm, I'm not cutting straight to the pattern I drew. Now, for the project bags, you'll need two rectangles that are 17 inches by 12 inches. Just write 17 by 12, and that you'll know what you need. I'm just going to kind of eyeball cut this across and um, have a front and a back cut apart. These are like the worst scissors. I really don't want to use my fabric scissors on this because it's got all that paint on it. Oh, those are really bad. I might have to use that. I use the fabric scissors that don't half work most of the time anyway. Are these at? No, these aren't at. It's this other pair of white handles. My sister-in-law gave me these because I think she found out they kind of stunk. They come, they unscrew themselves. The screw will back out as you're cutting along. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. All right, so there's a front and a back. And then see, I've got this great big piece left here on the end that I can make a journal out of. See, that much is left. Wouldn't that be a cool journal? Look. That would be a cool journal just like that. All right, I'm going to set this piece aside and one of these pieces. That wasn't dry. I'm going to set these aside to dry. All right. So I'm going to turn this like this here. I'm going to make a project bag out of this eventually. But before I do that, um, I'm just going to the middle here and sponge it out like an oval shape to create a painting in the middle. Um, if you don't want to do a journal cover and you just want to follow along and I mean, if you don't want to do a project bag, you could turn yours into a journal cover, a tote bag, anything you want to do with your fabric, feel free. Um, it's not a mandatory thing. We're here to have fun. So I'm going to create kind of an area to do a painting in the middle by um, mixing some white, I think, to start with. I guess I could gesso out a space, but I'm just going to use this white um, paint here.
and I don't want it to cover everything. I just want to push it to the back a little bit. The sponge is soaking it up. Let me get a brush. That one is not very wide. Let's see if a brush would be better. These are actual um, fabric. They're made to paint on fabric. The brushes are, um, I think, a nylon, and they're pretty stiff. So they push the paint down in. And I'm still trying to think of what do I want to put on the side of this? I might have to use the gesso. Look out. Becky wants to have fun. Ah, oh, hi, Teresa. I guess I should have cut an oval shape. Now, Mary said something about painting a rabbit because Lori's rabbit turned out so cool. Did y'all see Lori's paint girly's rabbit? It was so cool. I really liked it too. I might just squeeze that white right out onto the fabric. I want to use up what I got in this pile. Yes, we're going to make a, a bag out of this. I know that was crazy, wasn't it? Do this. Maybe a cityscape would be cool looking on here. Although that doesn't really go with the kind of grungy look I've got going on here, does it? The bags, I think, are a lot of fun. Um, I don't know if you, everybody has seen the huge tote I made. Um, it, it's big enough. It's holding uh, all the, about all the fabric I have pre-washed, ready to go for projects. That's acting weird right there, but we're not going to worry about it. Alright, I'm pulling out the big guns. That's modeling paste. That ain't gonna do it. Gesso.
fabric's acting weird right there, but I'm bag for me. It seems like the paint has made the uh, interfacing release a little bit right there. That's good enough because I'm I'm going to paint over it. I just want something to knock some of that back a little bit. But I don't like my rough edge. So I'm going to um, just mix up a little something here. Or get some different white. And kind of just soften this edge a little bit. Oh, I see my name. Hang on. Um, they are tulip soft fabric paints. Tulip soft fabric paint. All right, I mixed up a little bit of the kind of peachy color. Kind of soften this edge a little bit. The blue I have is too intense, so I'm just mixing some white in with it. I'm going to move it around a little bit, you guys, so bear with me.
Okay. Sharon Lombard. I think I'm doing a nature scene from the looks, from the way things are going. that out. Do I use the tools correctly? Probably not, but I got something in my brain. where that fabric is lifted from the uh, interfacing is driving me bonkers. Watch me make a mess. That's what this should have been labeled.
Right, that gets kind of what I have in my brain coming out. All right, I'm going to let that dry and see what you guys are saying. You're probably going, what on earth is she doing? Oh, Barbara had to go. Okay. Hope it goes well. Bye-bye. Aw, thanks, Sharon. All right, so let's do... Sorry I go quiet, guys. I'm concentrating. Trying to look up at the chat, too, every once in a while. You know, sometimes when I'm doing these like this, some of this stuff I put in the background will just disappear. Rub some color in here.
it's too wet. Hi, Shelly's book view, Brookview. Hello. Hi, Sharon Marla. All right, Let's let that dry a minute. I think I'm gonna. <laughs> that one's not been opened yet. One of these has been. No, you can't come up. Sorry. Nobody. Nobody. I can see you're going to be naughty. No. Don't be naughty. No. If I feed you, will you behave? Come on. I'll be right back, you guys. Tippy's being naughty. feline children. Okay. All right. All right. 
I'm going to turn it upside down. Work on it for a minute. <laughs> Oh, almost dipped it in my tea.
Almost in the tea again. Hi, Nettie. I feel like I almost need clean water already. I've made it into like mush. Okay. All right, I got to sit down a minute and let this dry and chat with you guys for just a minute. Doesn't look half bad. I have to keep adding water because it's um drying pretty fast on this glass sheet. Let's see if I can do this here. Hi, Suze.
Isn't it funny how our husbands always need us when we're doing something? <laughs> I'm sure you can use any paint brushes to paint on fabric, but I find these stiff brushes that are made exactly for painting on fabric really are nice. See, now I'm going to stay away from up here with any more paint because I want to be able to stitch through this later. So I'm going to try to keep all of the um, painty bits down low toward the center of the bag. I got too much yellow picked up there. I just want to put a little yellow on the bottom of this cloud because it's near the sun. Maybe a little bit more yellow on this here. Dry this off a little bit. Scrub this out so it's not quite so in your face. I definitely want to put some more yellow on that other cloud. I'm picking up the yellow and then I brush and brush onto the, um, the glass cutting plate so that I'm really kind of pushing off a lot of the yellow. So I've got just barely any on this brush because I want to just color the underside of this cloud. Let that dry a little bit and then I'll come back in and bring some more white back on top to lighten this back down just a little bit. I got a little yellow. That's the beauty of painting. You can go oh um you can go over things that don't look quite right. You can wait and then paint over it again. Um Let's put another cloud right in here. Now see, I've got a lot of yellow still in my paintbrush, but I am not going to worry about it. Kind of get my cloud shape sorted out. Maybe brush some of this off over here. Hi, Christine. I'll go into my paint, my white paint. Maybe we'll just maybe put a little wispy bits, you know. Clouds don't know they're supposed to only come in little round, puffy, rounded things. If you look up at the sky, you'll see clouds all different shapes. And a random little wispy bit here and there. The thing about me and painting is I get impatient. And you got to be patient to, to the colors that you don't, you don't automatically get the depth when you first put color down, that's the hardest thing I've had to learn about painting. I've never had any lessons. I just kind of play at it. And, um, and by playing, it gets better over time. I fought painting for a long time thinking, oh, I'd never like it. And my sister, Robin, she said, you should try it. I, she said, I think you'd really like um, putting paint to the to a, a canvas or a piece of fabric or whatever. Okay, I'm going in with my yellow. Maybe put a little bit in the middle here so it looks like it's got some layers. And maybe just a little hint of red. Wash, wipe most of it off. Because it is sunset time here on my mountain range. And remember, if it's too red, you can always go back you got on the side you can pick some of it up move it around and then if you still don't like it you can always come back in with white all right 
I'm going to leave the clouds alone for a while. And I'm going to, um, you learned how to paint clouds from Barb. Barb's a wonderful teacher. I just love Barb. She's awesome. All right. I think I want to get some light green mixed up over here and um, make a field down on the bottom here. That dog barks and barks 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I wish somebody would give him some attention. Drives me crazy. Don't have a dog if all you're going to do is tie it out in the yard and let it bark all the time. It's bad for the dog and it annoys the neighbors. <laughs> this is just some more of the same muslin. Um, I washed what I had left, which was two yards. But I'm, I'm only using a piece that's the width of the fabric by about 19 inches. I might have to mix some textile medium with some of my lighter greens for what I'd really like. Maybe I could add some yellow to this and get it to lighten down some more. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Well, this will give me a good background color. Then we'll go from there. And I'm just going to scrape this off on here. Scrubby dubby brush here. This water is really gross. <laughs> it's really, really gross. Oh, goodness, it's so thick and stiff. I've got a drop cloth that I picked up at Harbor Freight, and I was going to cut it all up into pieces, and I cannot find that thing for nothing. Thanks, Mary.
I can tell this paint is old though because um, I'm getting some weird, weird things going on. Is it too thick, Mary? Is your drop cloth too thick? Um, Cause see, that's what I was going to use. And I think that's what Anne's using too. Um, there's got to be a way we can utilize those um, drop cloths. Cause I think Gina Aaron's does all the time. Let's see if I can go back in here. Clean my mountains back up a little bit. Move the T. Well, the T is off to the side, but for some reason, my brain just keeps wanting to go to the T. With my paintbrush. The darkest of my paint is drying up really fast. I'm noticing the cats have added texture to this for me. All right, let me switch back to the uh, the round brush and put some little puffy bits back on my clouds up here. The hardest thing for me about clouds is trying not to overwork them. Might have to make this my Facebook uh, header before I turn it into a project bag.
It's hard to do painting and talk with you guys. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I'm fading off on you every once in a while. It's just my nature to... Mary found hers at the thrift store. All right, let's let that dry a sec and stand up and stretch. Just a minute. No tip. I've got so much paint out right now, buddy. Can you like just go somewhere? Go out on the porch a while. The door is open. Just go. No, you're not getting any more cat food. Just go all right i'm going to use um just a card and i'm going to mix up some um brown that's black where's the brown where's the brown i'm going to put some tree trunks in here with with that card <laughs> let's see what luck i have And just go. I'm doing this with the card because I can't dry, draw a straight line for the life of me. And I figure if I can do it with the card, then I can come in and All right, I'm going to leave that there. Where's my smallest brush? Get a bunch of this water out. Oh, okay, Mina. Thanks for coming and hanging. I'm going to leave those alone. I am picking up a little bit of black with this brown.
Okay. What time is it? It's 5.30 here. I don't want to interrupt y'all's dinner time. So I think what I'm going to do is I will go until 6 o'clock. And then um, we'll, we'll come back tomorrow. And I think I'm only going to paint a design on one side of my bag. And um, we'll pick this up tomorrow. Is that okay with everybody? And if you guys want to keep working on your bags on your own, feel free. Uh, we probably will not sew a bag until next Wednesday. Um, I'm trying to think of what's coming up. I don't think we have another hop or anything for a little bit. And... Uh, See if I can go back in and get my road in and not make it quite so wide this time back here. Or pathway. Maybe it's just a pathway. Pretend you're walking out the woods. Sometimes you have to stop painting, too, so that you can let your brain work on the design. Because right now I feel like I've started overworking it. It's like I need to take a step away and let my mind puzzle on this for several hours. Do you all ever have to do that? Just leave a project and then come back to it like that? I think that's where this, this needs to go. I think this needs to go on the side for a while. Okay. Oh, Windows update. Stupid old Windows update. All right. I'm going to mix up some more dark green and put some... Um, something on my pine trees and then I think I'm going to stop for today I I should have known this was going to be more of a a process than just painting and sewing <laughs> All right, let's see.
I'm awful close to the top there. I don't want to go much higher. <laughs> All right, I'm going to come down to this other tree here. We'll let our we'll let our uh, pieces take a, a minute and and breathe and we'll we'll come back to them tomorrow with clear heads and uh, see how they do. I'm gonna get this dark here on these trees. That's probably as far down as that needs to go. And then tomorrow I'll add highlights if, if it decides it needs them. The uh, cutting board I'm using is really messy right now. <laughs> This part where the uh, interfacing has come loose is kind of puzzling to me. All right. There was another change. Shelly is moving back to her evening spot. spot. Okay, I'll, I'll fix that, Mary. Have you updated it on your community tab? If so, I will um, just go copy that and, and paste it over what I have. See what Mary Okay. All right. I'll I'll fix that when I get off from here. All these little teeny motions. <laughs> tappity, 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 tappity. I hope it's not driving y'all bonkers. Yeah, I know. Shelly's got her hands full. And I only had to move a couple hours. I just can't imagine moving from an island. I just I just can't imagine it. I feel for her. 
it was so rough that move down here. Scott's still talking like he doesn't want to retire here. He wants to he wants to get out of South Carolina to retire, but I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know if I have another move in me, to be honest, unless we can pay somebody to do all of the work. I just I, I just don't think physically I'm going to be able to do that again. <laughs> Good enough there. My paint's drying out board faster than I can use it. All right, it is Wednesday night. Kathy will be on. Kathy's World is coming on, and I missed. Um, if she said who she's got on with her tonight, I missed it. Um, and I can't remember who else is coming on tonight. The The Wednesday night is filled up with new folks that I haven't watched before. So I think I'm going to stick with this 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. It's, it's working now. And I think when Scott gets on second, it'll still work just fine. Oh, my hand is getting tired from tappity tapping. <laughs> But I'm determined to get this dark shade in until I. So that tomorrow I can come in and add a little light green. And bring it on to life. All right. And I think down here, what I'm going to do is I've got um, some of that dark green left, but I'm going to throw some, I'm going to throw some uh, white in it and mix it up and go around my bottom edge. No, don't jump up here. Just to fade the edge away of, from the bottom of the trees. No tip. No, you cannot come up right now. I have paint. Go on, go on. Psst. He's like, you've talked with them long enough. It's time for me. It's tippy time. Just kind of fade out the stumps. That way I'm using this paint I've got on here. And not wasting it totally. Get it wispy looking. Around. All right. I think this is where I'm going to leave it for today and we'll pick it tomorrow. What do y'all think? Does it look all right? Hi, Barbara. It's impossible to watch it all. That's why I, I, I might go back to just Wednesdays. I was going to do the... The Thursdays might end up being a uh, just a standalone video that y'all can watch anytime, or I might premiere it at some time in the morning um, after Mary's gone off on Thursday, and uh, just have it do a premiere, and then it'll be like a show and tell of what I've been sewing, and then that way the rest of the week I can focus on sewing stuff and. Uh, yeah. So this will be the, so
so-called front of my bag. And then this is what it looked like before we added the painting in the middle. So this is my back. This is the front. And then I have this piece that I can turn into a journal cover for anybody that missed it. You're welcome, Peg. Or this could be turned into small bags. Um, I'm leaning more toward making a cover that a sketchbook, it could be a removable cover that I could just move to a sketchbook or whatever. All right, so I'm going to be on again tomorrow at 3.30 um, to try to finish painting this. And um, then we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you guys for coming today, and um, I'll see whoever I see when I see them. Thanks, Peg. And um, I'm going to try to get up and, and be in Mary's in the morning. If Mary, are you um, are you uh, live in it in the morning? Thank you, everybody. Um, and if you get a chance and wouldn't mind occasionally pop in back in um, and just leave a comment under the video, um, Dee Dee says it helps. So anybody that you watch live, uh, go back and just leave them a quick couple words um, under their videos. All right. Okay, guys, I'm going to let you go. Oh, about the group stream? Uh, yeah, Maddie, I can. Um, we're not doing one this week, but next week I'm going to do one in Fibsville. I'll set up a room in Fibsville, and I'll talk to you then. Okay, Mary, gotcha. All right, guys, have a good night. Bye.